Harrow School, one of the most exclusive private schools in Britain. Annual fees are almost £30,000. A gateway to a world of privilege, Harrow has educated aristocrats, prime ministers and royalty for more than 400 years. But unknown to most, the school stages an annual competition for families who could never afford the fees. At stake is a scholarship worth almost £200,000 and a chance to join Harrow's elite world. And this is the man who puts up the money. Whoever wins these scholarships is going to be socially engineered. He's going to be taken out of his little nest and he's going to be put into a completely new environment. This group of schoolboys will compete against each other in a gruelling day of tests and interviews. And for the first time, the school has allowed cameras to follow the selection process. Hello, everybody. Very nice to see you. What's your behaviour like at school? Have you taken any grade exams? What's your greatest achievement? For all of these boys, it's a momentous day. If they win, it will alter the course of their entire lives. school is perched on top of a hill in North London. With its greatest rival, Eton, it's one of the last boarding-only boys' schools left in Britain. You're now competing against 160 others to be in... Of Harrow's 800 pupils, one in seven will go on to Oxbridge. The vast majority pay annual fees that are more than the average British salary. The fees at Harrow are horrendous, you know, over £28,000 a year, because we're a boarding school. You know, it's very expensive running a boarding school. Now, that means that 98% of the population couldn't possibly afford to send their sons here. For most, Harrow is an unreachable world. But once a year, the financial barriers are lifted, as families from far more modest backgrounds are given a chance to join the select few. The Peter Beckwith Scholarship is one of around 30 offered by the school, but the only one targeted specifically at families who can't afford the fees. Hello, I'm Tim Hursley. Very pleased to meet you. Hello. Hello, who are you? Dion. Dion. Now, just sit down and relax. Nothing to worry about. I nearly said nothing to worry about yet, but nothing to worry about. So, we'll have to see. My name's Tim Hersey. Um, I'm lucky enough to run scholarships at Harrow, and you are definitely the best 11 of all the people who applied. So that is absolutely... This year, 11 boys have been shortlisted after detailed references were taken from their current schools. But only two can win. Well, why did you decide to, to wear this outfit today? Well, I thought because uh, since it was a special day, I thought we'll go all... Dandied up. Ten-year-old Krishan is the youngest boy selected to sit the scholarship. Hello. Hello. Hello, Krishan. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, very good, thanks. Um, would you like to come in? Yeah, yeah. He lives in a small ground-floor flat with his parents. There's only one bedroom, so Krishan doesn't have a room of his own. Would you like to see any of my favourite books or models or anything? Yeah, yeah why don't you choose? Um, I'll show you my favourite books then. We'll start with our non-fiction books. For example, very old, our Webster's Dictionary. Ah, there we are. One. <laughs> How about... My library of Shakespeare. And, of course, one of the books about World War II, one I like very much, it's about the SOE, the Special Operations Executive, who organised many of the spies throughout the war. What would you like about spies? Well, the fact that they are patriots in their own right, 
um, they have um, they are sort of always portrayed with cool gadgets, and I love gadgets like that. And they they do all these kung fu things like that, and so on and so forth. And I really like that. I really like martial arts as well. Yeah. So that's what um, is the main reason why I want to become a spy when I'm older, among many other things. You've all got things that I think would make you thrive at a school like this. Bit of a roller coaster day. You enjoy it. Have a good time. I know I'm going to. So now's the time to say your goodbye. The scholarship pays for the winner's entire education at Harrow. With it comes a ticket into a world of privilege and opportunity that will last their whole life. The boys, aged between 10 and 12, are in direct competition with each other. Are you ready? Steady, go. The day starts with maths. It's the first of many challenges that lie ahead, each designed to assess their abilities and scrutinize their characters. They'll be quizzed by a panel of Harrow masters Will a computer ever be more intelligent than us? Perform a musical solo. And every boy faces a one-to-one -one with Harrow's headmaster. OK, Krishan, come and sit here. It's not good enough just to be very intelligent. The idea is that you're going to be very intelligent, but also very good at music or sport or art or acting. Outstanding, I mean, you know, outstanding is the word that we, often, we use. Krishan has an IQ of 141, a score which puts him in the top half a percent of the population. Krishan could read a full storybook by the time he was two years old. So, you know, some words that he could say were quite big words. Experimental, Experimental would have been one of them. He, he knew, you know, parts of the body and was able to point relevant pages in, in a reference book to say, you know, that was the ear, or that was the eye, or, or that was um, the fingernail made of whatever a fingernail was made of. Keratin. Keratin. <laughs> We decided to move um, from Australia to the UK because we were told, you know, he had um, particular abilities and felt that he would have more opportunities here. It was a major life decision for us. To pack up and come here um, halfway across the world is a humongous decision. But by the age of three, Krishan was becoming restless at nursery and getting into mischief. His mum and dad felt the only answer was the challenge of full-time schooling. But they were turned down by each of the 40 primary schools they applied for because Krishan was a year too young. Because th there wasn't a school that would entertain him in, a, in the state um, school system, I really did have, I felt I had no other choice but to take him into a private school system. Krishan's mum is a social worker. His dad, an IT contractor, hasn't worked for over a year. They're already struggling to pay Krishan's private school fees. And now he's set his heart on a life at Harrow. Winning the scholarship is his only chance of getting there. To some extent, you're, you are playing God with a small g. You have got the ability, just by saying yes or no, to altering the destiny of this one individual and the whole of the family. And, you know, you don't enter, you don't make that sort of decision lightly. I usually imagine myself being jubilant after I've done this, um, the um, exam and, and, and they've said, well, you've got in, and I imagine myself running about my house and jumping and screaming in joy, so <laughs> that's all my dreams. You might, you might be very clever, go to a state school, you might be not as clever and you go to Harrow, the Harrow pupil will get further 
than the state school one. It's just the way it is. It's just a reference. 11-year-old Naman is one of the Harrow Scholarship finalists. If I pass it, I'm going to be the first one throughout the whole of my family to be in a top school. He lives in Southall. It's a low-income, high-unemployment suburb of West London. Known as Little India, it has the largest Asian population in the capital. Naman's dad, Afak, is second-generation Pakistani. His parents settled in Yorkshire, where he went to a state school. I mean, who do I know personally who's gone to Harawi to nobody? He's currently unemployed. Naman's mom is a childminder. <laughs> I've always known about Harrow, known, always known about Eton, and these have always been my focus to put, put him into schools like this. You know, from birth, I really saw that I'm going to do something for this, for this child. What do you know about Harrow School? What I know about it? It's a top school and there's, there's good education over there. And it's, it's a very big school as well. There are lots of houses and then in your own room you get paired up with a roommate. So it, looks, it seems kind of fun. The ambitions for Naman don't end with Harrow. He's also sitting entrance exams for seven other schools, including Eton. Like Harrow, Eton charges fees of almost £30,000 a year. I mean, when I told my wife, she goes, how are we going to afford it, what's going to happen? And it ain't going to happen. I says, listen, it's going to happen. I mean, this is my belief. Because, I mean, if, if these people, as pen to paper, they say they want outstanding children and they're going to contribute towards these, for these children, yeah, and then, then you've got him here, hopefully. I mean, of course, I mean, Oxford is the pinnacle, you know? That's where he needs to be. That's the first thing I told my mind, Oxford. Yeah. It needs to be Oxford. What did I tell, like, did I tell you that? <laughs> Oxford. That's where you need to reach. And these are the institutions that are going to get him there. Naman is halfway through the maths test. If he goes on to win the scholarship, he'll step into a world that bears little resemblance to the one he's grown up in. One in five pupils here are the sons of former Harrovians. The list of old boys includes Winston Churchill, Nehru, India's first prime minister, and King Hussein of Jordan. Celebrated literary figures like Lord Byron and top business leaders from the founder of Pret-a-Manger to the head of Baring's Bank. Well, it would be, it would be obviously ridiculous to pretend that Harrow was a, you know, a reflection of the real world, any more than one could make that statement about any school, actually, in Britain. Are you keen to broaden the intake of the school to make it more reflective of the real world? Yeah, no, I think it is an ambition, actually. It, I think it, it is an ambition of mine to make Harrow um, a, a better reflection of the real world because all my pupils are going to be going out into the real world. But children who might come here from, say, state schools, do you think it's... Intimidating when you first come. What I what I don't think um, is I don't think that it's socially intimidating in the way that your question slightly implied. I, I've never I mean I've been at Harrow for ten years and I haven't yet come across examples of boys uh, from lower income families feeling that uh, they're going to be intimidated by pupils who maybe come from wealthier homes. And, I mean, that may be surprising, but that is certainly exactly what we found. Yeah. The first challenge, the maths exam, is over. That paper was so easy. Yeah, I know. That's like a question for two years. Um, they gave us two maths tests. One maths test, the first one I thought was very easy. Um, with it, I had no real problems with it. But the second one, I have to admit, was much harder. And there were some questions which I was puzzling over, trying to solve it. 
How do you think you did? Well, I think in the first paper I would have probably aced it, but I'm not so sure about the second one. But it will take more than a talent for maths to outshine the competition and walk away with a £200,000 education. Now, the contest steps up a gear. Summoned before a panel of Harrow Masters, the boys will be expected to answer demanding questions on morality and philosophy. But they have no idea what will come up. Firstly, some introductions. I'm Mr. McGregor. I'm housemaster of the headmaster's house. And this is Dr. Davis, who, is, uh, who teaches maths. Now, we've got a few questions we're going to ask, and we'll have a little bit of a discussion. So um, feel free to chip in. What do you think makes a person brave? Sometimes you may think what is bravery is actually foolishness. If you jump into no man's land in a war and get shot down, that is not bravery, that is foolishness. But if you were with a patrol and you gave the others time to get away um, by, sh by shooting down the enemy, that would be bravery because you sacrificed your life for others. Because you have to go with what your heart tells you to do, mm -hmm. not just because someone tells you to do it. Like my dad, uh, he wants me to go to Harrow School. Mm -hmm. So, and that's coming from his heart. Mm -hmm. Good, excellent. Lovely to see you. See you later. Do come in, come and take a seat here. The first question I want to ask is what you think makes a good school? A good school has good facilities, like Harrow. It, ha it, it, mu it should have a, a range of different activities, which Harrow does. And I think teachers have a lot to do with that, because if you don't like your teachers, you can't like your school. And if you can't like your school, you can't like your education. It's just a vicious spiral. And absolutely certain all the teachers in Harrow are wonderful. What is it about Harrow that you've fixed your ideas on this is the school I'd like him to go to? Um, it's a prestigious school, a well-renowned school in the whole of the country, not just in England but America and um, abroad, so to say. So it would be an opportunity for my son to go to such a well-prestigious school. Toomey goes to a state primary in Hornchurch, Essex. He's particularly strong at maths and one of the brightest children in his school. The eldest of two boys, his dad works nights sorting post for the Royal Mail. His mom, Adiola, has a job with the Crown Prosecution Service. For over a year, She's had her sights set on getting to me into Harrow. Quick, quick, quick. Get into the car. This way. Yeah, get in. Thanks, Mum. You're welcome. Hi. Anyway, how was the school? Did you enjoy English? Yeah. Maths? Okay. okay, how was the maths? It was, was easy. Was it easy? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. And we wrote stories. Okay, you used all your similes and yeah. phrases? Yeah. Excellent. That's very good then. So, we're hoping for a distinction in that. Yeah. Make sure you focus on your music as well. Because you know you're doing it on Saturday. What am I? Oh, yes. Oh, what, you're going to play at Harrow? I don't know. Had to be something really good. Well, today is um, Wednesday, Toomey, so I think we better know what we're going to be playing. Yes. Toomey's mum sets him extra homework before she leaves the house each morning at 5.30. She gets to work early, so she can leave in time to market and then ferry Toomey to swimming, tuba, and violin lessons. When he did his first music exam, I think he was in year two, he came back with um, merit, and I said, but your other friends got distinction, and his response was, oh, but they come from a musical background, their mum can play the piano. I said, no, you don't have a... F you don't think like that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and when he did the exams again, he did his grade two, he came back with distinction. I said, look at that to me. Oh, yeah. 
he did his grade three again. He got distinction. I said, how does that feel now? And ever since then, he's just been spot on. <laughs> But do you think if, if Toomey went to one of the local sort of state schools, do you think that you'd be letting him down? Um, would I let you down if you went to the local school? Would you want to go to the local school if you want to go to a, pretty, a prestigious school? Prestigious school? Yeah, I think he would, do, he would want to go to prestigious school. I, I would love that as well because um, it would definitely look really nice on his... Um, CV as well, so. Why do you want to go to prestigious school, Timmy? Because you get lots of good education, which helps you get a good, go to a good college and a good university, and then get a good job. So, Timmy, yeah. tomorrow is the big day. Yeah. Um, I am so proud of you, yeah? So, you OK? Yeah. All the best. Thank you. Think before you answer the questions. Don't rush it. When they ask you a question, why do you want to come to Harrow? Just be calm on how you answer the question. Yep. The Lord will be with you. Yep. Yeah? I love you. Love you too. OK, darling. Good night. To me, can you s sit there? And what about the interviews with the masters? How will you get on in that, do you think? <sighs> that bit I am actually dreading because Timmy doesn't talk. He talks amongst his peers, his friends, but when it comes to grown ups, adults, he's really, really shy. Last week we had a competition in the school. They had to argue whether beauty was a matter of taste. Somebody can be beautiful by their looks, or somebody can be beautiful inside. Good, good, good. If you're a swimmer, you might, um, like, think the water, the movement of the water is beautiful. Mm -hmm. or... um, if, when you see someone else, then you... I think it's when you see someone else that... Um, you... then you might think, so it's an easy question. Mm. Will a computer ever be more intelligent than us, than a man? No, um, because it can't think. What, so what is thinking? Um, it is a process in your mind mm. um, when a thought comes into you. Mm. 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 People all think that computers are smarter than humans just because they can work out things really quickly. But that's... It's not just about working things quickly. Because mm. you Because it's not just... Mm. Well, I, yeah, what, what, what do you think? If you didn't get into Harrow, how would you feel? I felt angry with myself because I, my mum's trying really hard for me to get into Harrow, so I'd be feel ashamed to let her down. For a man's dad, a fact. The quest to get his son into an elite school has become a full-time occupation. He's been coaching Naman for two years. These are the 11 plus verbal reasoning papers. I've got, still got two to mark at the moment. This is a set of five he's done. I mean, paper one, if you look, he's got 96%. Paper two, I've marked it, he's got 97%. As soon as he's done the test, he wants to know what he got. He goes, Dad, mark it now. He makes me mark it straight away. 
Good. Do you ever think, God, am I am I pushing him too hard? Yeah, you. No, no. You think you're pushing him, right? But end of the day, he's self motivated too. You can always know. Like I, the other day, I noticed he didn't want to do it. He went up to his mum, told, and then I just left him till the next morning. You know, I didn't say anything to him. I thought, okay, just. Because if I encourage him more, then he's going to start crying in front of me and he's not in a healthy system, is it? Just leave it. Just He's tired, needs to relax. New day, fresh day, just tell him again. But at the end of the day, you can, push it, you can push a child how much you want. But if he don't want to do it, it ain't going to happen. Did mm. your dad sort of drive you the way that you've got ambition for Neymar? No, nah, not at all. Not at all. They, it's just, I mean... 99%, I think, people, parents, families, they just see the kids go to school in the morning, come back in the evening, and that's it. Let the world go, <laughs> go around. The scholarship competition has reached a critical point. Headmaster Barnaby Lennon is about to join the fray. He wants to know what each boy can contribute to boarding school life. For most, it's going to be the first interview they've ever faced. Right, come on in, Newman. D dump your stuff down there. I think I'll be nervous in the interview because, like, let's say if I don't know what to say, then... I, then the headmaster might not like, like me. I see you've brought a violin and a guitar. Yeah. Good. Well done. So that's what that's one of your interests, clear, music. What other interests have you got? Sports. What what sport do you like doing? Football. Good. We play a lot of football here. Yeah, I want to be here when I grow up. Yeah. Okay. That's so that's one thing. Football. What else? What else do you like doing in your free time? Snooker. Do you? Do you read at all? Read? Yeah. I started reading a book called uh, Roald Dahl, George's Marvelous Medicine. Is it good? Yeah, they describe the characters really, really well. Excellent. Now, Harrow is a boys' boarding school, isn't it, as you know? Why are you interested in coming to a school like this? It's one of the top schools, and my parents, they want me, like, to go to Oxford. Yeah, good. Oxford University, and they're saying maybe if, we, if I get into this, it might lead me to Oxford. Yeah. Mm, I felt nervous at the start, because I thought I was going to say something wrong, but then I felt confident. What's your behaviour like at school? Mm, really good. Good. So tell me, what's your greatest achievement in chess? Now, why on earth did you start playing the tuba? What do you like about the boarding? Um, not quite sure how to explain it, but it's like, like, it's like, what is it like? Well, so what do you think is the disadvantage of being at a boarding school? Um, uh, well, I think, um, some people can get really homesick. Exactly, um, of course. One of your interests in life is acting. Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's a huge hobby of mine. I enjoy it so much and there's nothing I like more than to step onto a stage. Buzz is amazing. Toomey's been called for his interview with the headmaster. Another stumble could end his chances of a scholarship. So, Toomey, well, um, tell me first of all, why are you interested in coming to Harrow? I am interested in coming to Harrow because I've heard that they're a really good school and they give a really good education not just in ag academic-wise, but in sports, drama, yeah. music, things like that. All of those things which you're interested in? Yeah. OK. Tell me what you do with music. I play the violin, and I'm currently doing grade four. Are you? Good. Because in grade two, I got distinction. Grade three, I got distinction. So my teacher's putting me forward for grade four. Well done. Okay. Excellent. OK, Krishan, come and sit here. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and nice to meet you as well. Come, now, how old are you? So, I'm ten. So you're probably the youngest boy here, I would think, today. 
So why um, are you interested in coming to Harrow? Well, I'm interested in coming to Harrow because it is an international school that is known all over the world. Yeah. It has an amazing academic standard and has special Harrovian football, a lot of different sports, combined cadet force, music and drama, and also the extracurricular clubs you have. I love reading. Good. Yeah. Debating and quizzing. I like sports very much. I have not had much time to pursue them, and therefore I think I can do this at Harrow. The first choice would be Harrow. Um, his first choice, one that he has owned wholeheartedly, is Harrow. Obviously, him being so geared up to go to Harrow, if he didn't get in, it would be a huge disappointment for him. Over the course of seven hours, the testing continues at a relentless pace. Every performance is assessed, graded and recorded as the search for Harrow's ideal scholar goes on. With a scholarship worth such a huge amount of money, selecting the wrong two boys would be a very costly mistake. This scheme is being paid for by Peter Beckwith and by you know, some other benefactors. And Tim and I have got, looking over our shoulder, the men and women who have paid the money, frankly. So we need to make sure we are recruiting the right boys and that they do very well when they're here to justify this high level of expenditure. This is Peter Beckwith, the man behind the money. Welcome to Prospect House. It's a grade two listed building, um, built by the Victorians in 1862. As a schoolboy, Beckwith himself benefited from a scholarship to Harrow. He went on to build a property business with his brother. They sold it for 500 million pounds. So far, He's paid for 37 boys to be educated at Harrow. What we're looking for are families with ambition and drive and the courage to change that, that, their whole sort of, you know, lifestyle. What are the challenges for a boy in adapting? He's got to have this self-belief that he's actually as good as any of these guys who come from fancy, you know, estates or... Uh, Fathers have, you know, bigger cars. He must be jealous. He must face life head on. We find these rough diamonds, <laughs> and, uh, you know, by the time they leave Harrow, they've, they've been polished and they're able to go out into the world and do good. Come on, man. Bit of skill. That's it, control. Come on, who's in goals? He could be quite a different boy, though, couldn't he, by the time he's 17, 18? Yeah, vastly. I mean, it could change. I mean, he, he, he once saw a dream. I mean, he goes, I saw a dream, Dad, that I speak really posh English. Really, he told me. <laughs> That's it. Well done, well done. And he likes that. He likes that kind of style. But uh, I don't know if you're saying it in a negative way to me. Are you, you're not in a negative way that he's going to change for the... Is it going to be for the worse or for the better? I don't know. What are you trying to say? To fit in here, Harrow believes a boy needs to offer an array of talents. Those with any musical ability are encouraged to play at today's competition. A strong showing could make all the difference when the final decision is made. Naman and his dad have decided he should perform, even though he's never taken a graded music exam. Some of the other boys are musicians with several years' training already behind them. 
Each boy will be assessed by Harrow's head of music. Well done, thank you very much. Toomey is already studying grade four violin. How long have you been learning that piece for? About a month. Good. Thank you very much. I think it went well. And what did he say about your, your playing? He said that it, I make a really nice sound. <laughs> but Toomey faces competition from Alex, a chorister already training at the Royal College of Music. There does appear to have been one musician that we've seen this afternoon who has some exceptional talent. And, you know, if he chose to come to Harrow or we were in a position to try and attract him to come to Harrow, then, you know, then obviously um, that would be very exciting from Harrow's point of view. If I just tell you what's going to happen next, obviously all my colleagues are now marking the tests and all the interviews and all those sorts of things. I'm going to be meeting with the headmaster on Tuesday. We'll make the decisions then. And some of you are going to be lucky and some of you aren't going to be quite so lucky. But realistically, I'm really confident that he should get a play. He's going to get this scholarship. I'm really confident with him because I believe he's ready. Not just his academic, his sports, and also with his, I mean, he's a bit weak on his music, but I think he'll get there, and I think they'll recognise that. <sighs> Nervous, just waiting for that letter and just sort of opening and hoping that it's good news. Okay, they've had a fantastic day. They've Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Bye. Right. Ideally. I would find two fantastic boys from the 11 we've met today and nine who weren't fantastic. Now, I just think that it's going to be very difficult to choose the two best ones. I'm not sure I'd like to put my money on any particular boy yet. I think I'd rather look at all the evidence, first of all, before declaring my hand. Three days after the scholarship competition, the test results are in. The deliberations over who to choose can now start in earnest. Enough, From an initial lineup of 11 candidates, Headmaster Barnaby Lennon has to pick two winners. The difficulty, I suppose, is that there are three boys this year who seem to me to have done extremely well. You tell me then who you, who you think look good, good. Take them one at a time. Christian Emmanuel did extremely well. So he's the youngest. So, so he's, he's done very well in maths. Very well in the IQ well test. Maths, yes. Very well in the interview. In, yeah. Alexander Banwell, a Banwell. really, really strong musician. Well, he's grade seven, piano and violin. For an 11 year old, he's absolutely exceptional musically. And possibly Tumi and Mulladun. Tumi? 
has done very, very well in the maths, pretty well in the English, and uh, David Woodcock, who interviewed him for music, thought he was, uh, he was good. Almost everyone who met him thought there was some potential there. Yeah, so I liked him. The headmaster is faced with a quandary. Three front runners for a scholarship that can only fund two places. By the evening, he's made his decision. As is the case every year, it's left to Tim Hersey to deliver the news to the boys themselves. Hello. Hello, Christian, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Can I just tell you straight away, we were very, very impressed with you. We love you to come to Harrow. Why don't you just sort of tell your parents briefly that and then just come back and have a quick word with me, OK? OK, they want me to come. Ooh! Yeah? OK, are you excited? I'm very excited. OK, do you think you'll have a good time here? Yes, definitely. OK, well, that's really good news. Now, can I just have a quick word with your mum? Wow, what was that, Mr Hersey? We really like Christian. We love him to come to Harrow and we're definitely going to give him a scholarship. So you have a really good celebration tonight and we'll sort out all the details later on. I have never seen him so excited, so happy. We were uh, parked right in front of the McDonald's entrance. Krishan got out of the car and did a whoopee dance <laughs> outside McDonald's, shouting at everybody that went in and out of McDonald's, yes, Harold, yes, Harold. <laughs> I, I was practically dancing all the way to, the, um, to home, yeah. <laughs> the best thing is phoning up someone who is always really, really excited and is jumping up and down on the other end of the phone when I say they've won a Beckwith scholarship. The hard thing is obviously turning people down. You know, that's a very difficult letter to write or a very difficult telephone call to make. The next boy to get a phone call is Toomey. When you have finished, you may hang up or press 1 to change your message. Um, hello, Mrs. Emerald, and it's Tim Hersey here from Harris School. I'd very much like to uh, speak with you and Toomey this evening. Uh, look forward to speaking to you later on, I hope. Bye bye. It's horrible waiting, isn't it? It is. I've just been thinking that if I'm going to get a scholarship or not. So I've been nervous, but excited. You've been thinking about it a lot? Yeah. delighted to offer Alexandra Beckwith scholarship to come to Harrow. He impressed us all hugely. He's a really, really good boy. Alex, the talented singer, has won the second scholarship. So you and your wife break open a bottle of champagne tonight and enjoy yourselves, OK? The future is sorted. That's him. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. This year, the school's taken the unusual step of offering three Beckwith scholarships. Toomey has also won a place. Uh, Mum, yeah? I got a scholarship. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh! See? All your hard work has paid uh, she, off. She wants to talk. Oh, does he? Oh. Hello? Thank you. And you too. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye. Mm. <laughs> oh, my baby. He's going to have Harrow School, 10 November 2009. Dear Krishan, very many congratulations on winning a Peter Beckwith Harrow scholarship. By the end of the week, all the families have been contacted in writing. Oh, hello. We got uh, the letter through the post yesterday. 
uh, saying he wasn't nominated for the uh, scholarship. I consoled uh, the man yesterday. I mean, obviously he was really hurt yesterday, really emotional all evening. You can imagine, because his, his heart was really into it. How are you, how are you feeling now? Still sad, because I wanted to go to Harrow. I'm sorry you didn't get in, because I know you wanted to. I mean, it makes you want to try harder. Yeah, it's not like it is, it's not the end all, no end all of it. Because it is just going to, we told no man he has to try harder now to make sure. Because now he's seen that it is competition. And uh, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? A week on, the winners and their parents are invited to the annual Beckwith Scholars Lunch. For these families, it's their first taste of Harrow life on the inside. Thank you very much. I'm thinking again for this um, fantastic opportunity. Yeah, well, you, you take a full advantage of it. So where are you going to? Oxford, Cambridge? Oxford, hopefully. Oxford to do classics. Oh, right. Very good. Classics. But for the Beckwith boys, who are already studying at Harrow, there's an official duty to perform. On this day each year, they're expected to report their achievements and publicly thank the man who pays for their education. I never generally thought I'd be standing here at one of the world's greatest schools addressing a whole room of important, instrumental people in the next five years and possibly my whole life. Peter Beckwith is like a Father Christmas figure, bestowing amazing gifts on the one or two or three Peter Beckwith scholars each year. Now I'm well into my critical second year. This will show whether I have the skills and determination to reward your investment. Harrow isn't just a school, it's a gift. And for that, I'd like to thank Peter for this gift. I truly thank you, Mr Beckwith, for all that you have granted me, and I'm forever thankful. To some extent, you're, you are playing God with a small g. You have got the ability, just by saying yes or no, to altering the destiny of this one individual, and you don't make that sort of decision lightly. scholarships truly the route to happiness for the boys share your views on the website at channel4.com slash cutting edge next lindsay lowen's on the chatty man sofa